Chapter 2 Sternum and Ribs, Thorax The dorsal vertebrae are extended laterally by bony arches, called ribs, which are implanted in front of the lateral parts of a second bony column, the sternum. The ribs and the sternum, in concert with the dorsal vertebrae, constitute the thorax. 1. Sternum Odd and a half, the sternum is a flat bone located in the anterior part of the thorax. It is compared to a sword, and hence its division into fist, body and point, or xiphoid appendage. It measures 15 to 20 centimeters in length, by 5 or 6 in width. It has two faces, anterior and posterior, two extremities, upper and lower, and two lateral edges. Previous face Almost flat transversely, it is more or less convex vertically. Notice in them a series of transversal lines that go from one edge to the other, vestiges of the welding of the different pieces, sternobrae, that enter into the primitive constitution of the sternum. It gives attachment to the sternal bundle of the sternocleidomastoid and to the median fascicles of the pectoralis major. In the lower part corresponding to this face, immediately above the xiphoid process, there is a more or less marked depression, the supraxiphoid fossa. Upper side More or less concave, it presents, like the previous one, a series of transversal lines that have the same significance. It is related to the thoracic viscera, lungs, pericardium, heart. Upper extremity It is the thickest part of the bone. They are distinguished in it, first, in the midline, a notch known as the fork of the sternum, second, on each side of the fork, two articular facets, for the clavicle, they are concave transversely and slightly convex anteroposteriorly. Lower extremity It is made up of the xiphoid process. This highly variable appendage is, depending on the case, triangular, oval, rectangular, bifid, curve forwards or backwards, more or less deviated to the left or right, etc. It frequently has a hole, the xiphoid foramen. Lateral edges They are distinguished in right and left. Twisted in italic S, they have two series of regularly alternating notches throughout their height, first, articular notches, seven in number, destined for the first seven ribs, and are called costal notches, second, non-articular notches, six in number, located between the preceding ones, which correspond to the anterior extremity of the intercostal spaces and are called intercostal notches. 2. Ribs and Costal Cartilages The ribs are flat bones, arranged in an arc between the spine and the sternum. There are 24 of them, 12 on each side. They are designated by first, second, third, etc., counted from top to bottom. The first seven articulate with the sternum are called sternal or true ribs. The last five, without direct relation to the sternum, are called a sternal or false ribs. The last two false ones, free throughout their entire length, are called floating ribs. Each rib is made up of two portions, first, the posterior or bony portion, which is the bony rib or rib itself, second, anterior, cartilaginous portion, which is the cartilaginous rib, or costal cartilage. Bone rib, rib proper. The ribs offer general characters common to all of them, and some have particular characters that are their own. General characters of the ribs. The ribs are implanted obliquely in the vertebral column, forming an open downward angle with this bony trunk. Considered from the point of view of their direction, they describe an irregular curve as a whole, whose concavity faces inwards, they have two angles, a posterior angle and an anterior angle, and two curvatures, winding curvature or curvature on the plane, 
and curvature of torsion or curvature on the edges. For its description, in each rib we have to consider the following three parts, body, posterior extremity and anterior extremity. Body It presents an external face, convex, in which the two angles, anterior and posterior, can be seen, an internal, concave face, which corresponds to the pleura, an upper edge, obtuse, a lower edge, which has in its two posterior thirds a canal, the costal canal, for the intercostal nerves and vessels. Rear extremity Includes the entire portion of the costal arch placed anterior to the transverse process. Three parts are distinguished in it, first, the head, it is the most internal part, which has two small articular facets for the two neighboring vertebrae, second, a tuberosity, it is the most external part, which has a small articular facet for the external extremity of the corresponding transverse process, third, the neck, it is the middle part, strongly rough in its posterior part and in the superior part for the ligamentous insertions. Forelimb Slightly bulging, it presents an elliptical facet, more or less concave, in which the costal cartilage is housed. Own characters of some ribs There are four ribs that present characters that allow them to be distinguished from all the others, they are the first, the second, the eleventh and the twelfth. First rib the proper characteristics of this rib are, first, its orientation so that its two faces face one upwards and the other downwards, second, the presence on its upper face of two vascular channels, a posterior one for the subclavian artery and an anterior one for the homonymous vein, separated by a rough eminence, the tubercle of Les Frank, for the anterior scalene. They can also be pointed out as distinct characters, first, the absence of the costal canal, second, the presence in the head of a single facet, third, the vertical flattening of the neck, and fourth, the presence, on the upper part of the forelimb, of a rough surface for the costoclavicular ligament. Second rib. This presents two main distinct characters, first, the absence of the costal canal, second, the presence, on its upper outer face, of a more or less protruding rough surface for one of the fascicles of the serratus major. Eleventh and twelfth ribs Three characters allow these ribs to be distinguished, first, a single facet on the head, they articulate with a single vertebra, second, absence of facets on the tuberosity, they do not articulate with the transverse process, third, no indication of twisting. The twelfth will be distinguished from the eleventh by being shorter and not having a posterior angle. Costal cartilages The costal cartilages present a configuration similar to that of the ribs, of which they are a continuation. Each of them presents, first, two faces, one before and one behind, second, an external, prominent extremity, which continues with the elliptical dome that represents the anterior extremity of the rib, third, an internal extremity, equally prominent, which presents a variable disposition according to the costal cartilage to which it belongs, it is rounded and almost flat on the first cartilage, configured in a dihedral angle in the next six cartilages, sternal insertion cartilages, very thin, and with a facet on its upper edge in the eighth, ninth and tenth, very thin, pointed and vermiform in the last two. 1. Thorax in general. The thorax is a bony and cartilaginous cavity in which the lungs and heart are housed. It has the figure of a truncated cone with a lower base. Its height is 15 cm in front, 27 cm behind and 32 cm on the sides. For its description we can consider in it, the outer surface, the inner surface, base and vertex. Outer surface The outer surface presents four faces. The anterior face has for lateral limits an oblique line downwards and outwards, 
which passes through the anterior angle of the ribs. It is formed by the following parts, sternum, chondrosternal joints, costal cartilages, chondrocostal joints, and anterior extremity of the ribs up to the anterior angle. The posterior aspect is also limited by two oblique lines that pass through the posterior angle of the ribs. It's formed, first, along the posterior plane of the thoracic column from the spinous process to the apex of the transverse process, second, outside the transverse processes, along the outer face of the ribs, from the tuberosity to the posterior angle. The side faces, two in number, one right and one left, occupy the entire space between the two preceding faces. Convex both vertically and transversely, they are made up of the twelve ribs and the eleven intercostal spaces, which interpose each other. Inner surface. Four faces are also distinguished in this one. The anterior face, concave, has exactly the same limits and the same anatomical constitution as on the outer surface. The posterior face, very projecting forwards, presents, first, in the midline, the dorsal column, wider below than above, which seems to project towards the meeting of the sternum, and second, on each side of the column, two vertical canals intended to accommodate the posterior edge of the lungs, which are called pulmonary canals. The highly concave lateral faces are formed, as on the outer surface, by the ribs and intercostal spaces. Vertex It represents an elliptical orifice whose largest diameter is transverse, constituted, in front, by the fork of the sternum, behind, by the body of the first thoracic vertebra, and on the sides, by the inner edge of the first rib. It measures 4 or 5 centimeters in the anteroposterior direction and 10 to 12 centimeters in the transverse direction. In its orientation it is inclined from top to bottom and from back to front, a horizontal line at the level of the sternal fork would find, behind, not the first dorsal, but the second. Base It is also a hole, but much wider than the previous one, it measures, on average, 12 cm in the anteroposterior direction and 26 cm in the transverse direction. It is formed, in the posterior part, by the body of the twelfth dorsal, in the anterior part, by the base of the xiphoid process, on each side, by the costal cartilages, which ascend obliquely from below to above, from the twelfth rib towards the sternum. The double series of costal cartilages, those on the left and those on the right, limit an angle, whose vertex corresponds to the base of the xiphoid process, which is called the xiphoid angle. On average it measures 70 degrees in men and 75 degrees in women. Thoracic Index The centesimal ratio between the transverse diameter and the anteroposterior diameter is called the thoracic index. It measures on average 127 in the skeleton and 140 in the subject covered with its soft parts. Thoracic perimeter Indicates the outer circumference of the thorax covered with its soft parts. It is measured at the level of the armpit or at the height of the xiphoid process in inspiration and expiration.